What's up guys, this is Dragon, and welcome to part 5 of my Soul Calibur 5 modding guide. In this part we'll be going over, like, basically just going over character structure and equipment mods. Basically what you could do with this is you could do character splicing, you could go in depth and have more control over what is on your character. So it gives you like pretty much full customization options. For example, you could put Raphael's face on Tira if you wanted to be an asshole. You could take a female character and give her a male body texture set. Or you could go to a male and give him a female texture set, which is really weird. Um, you could change the hairstyle, so you could give female male hairstyle, vice versa. Or you could go in and you look at full piece dress outfits that have like the arms and the skirt and all that and you actually get separated into pieces. So you could take away the arms or you could only keep the arms, get rid of everything else. Or you could spawn a character, a female character, that a bra. And just to say when you do that, it's going to be untextured. So, you know, you're not going to have like premium fat material, unfortunately. But anyways, let's get started here. I'm assuming you've watched parts 1 through 4. If not, do that because I explain things and I won't be doing that here. Let's try and save time. Uh, I save my save data here, so I'll just drag that to HXD. First step's always the same, where you want to control F and find your character. I'm going to be modifying Tira as usual. And this is what's going to be different. I'm not going to say, well, now scroll up and modify shit. What you're actually going to do is copy from the last letter of your character name all the way up to the top of their save data, which is where the position, well, the, you know, it's above the seven Ys. It's, it's, it, it's above the, pos the, the physique code, which is right there. So you're going to, you're going to copy all the way to the Y dot dot Y. It'll be that way for every character. That's basically, you know, it might be a little more, but this is all you need to care about is the Y dot dot Y. If it's a male character it might be y dot something else y but same shit so what you're gonna do is you're gonna copy all that you're gonna do new file in hxd either paste right or paste insert doesn't matter and you're gonna save this as a new file for me as you can see i have several characters saved um i'll just save over this tier the font yes and you might be wondering why I do this well it's cleaner, it's easier, it's more precise, as opposed to kind of finding stuff in here where it's always going to be different. If you copy only from the y dot dot y to the name, every single thing you want to modify will be in the exact same place. So there's no more guesswork. You could be absolute with the position like, you know, row zero, column zero two. And so, yeah, do that. It's a lot more, it's a lot easier. And instead of going straight to equipment, first thing I want to do is give you guys some fun tidbits of information. Row 0, column 0, 2. You'll see a 0, 1 here for female characters. What does this tell you to do? This is a male-female texture flag. 0, 1 means female. So if I were to put 0, 0 there, Tira would have a male texture set. So she'd look really buff and manly. It's kind of gross. So do that at your own risk. Trust me, it's really disgusting. After that, uh, row 0... Column zero 04, you have her style byte, and you're like, well, what's that doing up there? Well, the thing is, this is actually referring to the save slot the character's going to be in when you're selecting it. Uh, zero A is obviously Tira, so if I were to change that to like zero F, I believe, is Viola, Tira would show up in Viola's save slot. Or, you know, if you want a character to have like Elysium style, I would, I believe you would put her style byte up there to avoid the game crashing, and that's how you do that. Um... I don't have it on me at the moment, but yeah, if you check my part one, you'll understand that. Next, uh, column 05, you'll have the voice byte. A lot of people ask about that too. I don't have a database on me right now of all those, but just open up another character, like an Aeon or something, do the same process, and just look in the same exact spot, it'll be there. Like, I'll show you guys, I have a random CAS character, this is so justly named. And if you look at her, you know, 0, 1, she's so have a female texture set. 20 is the CAS character save slot. And her voice is 68. So if I wanted to give Tira, or if I want to give my CAS Tira's voice, I just put 2, 3 in there. Another fun fact is one thing, uh, FF, 
usually doesn't mean much. It's usually a null value, but surprisingly, it also represents, at least in this particular case, Tira's gloomy voice. Yeah, gloomy is his own voice file, so you could give a custom character her gloomy voice by putting FF there. So that's pretty cool. Um, I believe these three values represent the pitch tone and stuff. I haven't really tested that because that's something I don't really care about. But please experiment if you want and let me know what you find. That'd be cool. Uh, lastly, row zero or column zero B, you'll have her style byte again. And this is actually the pose that she has available when snapping pictures. So I'll use viola as the example. If I replace that with zero F, and I'm in the character creators, you will have Viola's poses. So basically she'll be sitting there and she'll be levitating the ring blade because they still keep their current weapon. And that's pretty cool because you could you could give her like nightmares and she'll look like a badass instead of having her pathetic, whippy, girly poses and stuff. Um, yeah. Anyways, let's get started. The point of this video is uh, equipment. So what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down to row 0460. So I'll just put that at the top here. 0460 and this is where the equipment actually starts at column 03 and I'll tell you how this is set up every equipment piece is composed of five bytes so keep that in mind it's important it's composed of five bytes from left to right it's structured by the type type is essentially kind of just what it is generally so like we see 16 a lot here that means 16 is your female body parts so you'll have the type you have the main ID main ID is mostly relevant when you get to a bunch of random equipment sets I don't actually have those values on me so you'll again you'll have to like create a CS character and do the same thing and identify what pieces those are uh, it's important for the one player two player models that's basically just changing the type main ID will always be there, but I'll get into that later. Um, you have the main ID, or you have the type, you have the main ID, type always first. Uh, one player, two player flag, it's always be zero, zero if you're not dealing with one player, two player models. Uh, you have the sub ID, which is like, only certain models have it. It's basically an alternate version, so like a female with a bra and a female without a bra simply is the same model code, their reference code, but you change the sub ID. And lastly, you have the position. And position is really important because it tells you where all the equipment is at, what the equipment is. And I actually have a notepad file here that I composed of that has all the position codes. So essentially, if you want to mod a, I say essentially a lot. If you want to mod a character's neck, you would look for the last of those five bytes, which is the position code. So it's like, hey, what's zero zero? Let's check. Yo, cool. Zero zero is neck. Yeah, you know, this is in the video description too, so check that out. So, best way to do it is if you're making a custom character and they have a special neck piece, you go to the same thing, same location, uh, which would be 0460 where it starts for this particular example. Uh, 0460, and, you know, this is just a female, so she has the same neck, so it's like, oh, cool. And you would just copy that, and you would just paste it in here. And that's how you do equipment swapping. Uh, if you want to get rid of the neck, you basically equip a null value. Uh, this means null. FF0000, FF, FF. If you put that everywhere, your character will spawn invisible. But that's like game breaking shit, so don't be an asshole and don't do that online because people will be like, this guy sucks. Uh, but yeah, that's a null value. Uh, won't crash the game or anything. It's completely cool to use those. And that's really all there is to it. Um, just check the position codes like neck upper breast, thigh, if I want to modify her thigh, just go to position 09, so it's like, there it is. And I think, I guess I probably failed to mention, um, every reference code is five bytes, it's always separated by three bytes of just nothing, zero, zero. So five, you have the neck, and then separated by three, and you have zero, one, which is the upper breast, separated by three. Very easy, very organized. Um, I'll tell you guys how to do the student mod too. It's been popular demand. Uh, basically, as you can see, you have upper breast and you have lower breast, and they're represented by zero one and zero six for position. And all that involves is changing the sub ID. I'm just saying this is a tier with no equipment on. 
So basic default bra panty combo. It'll always look like this for female characters. So without the bra, you want to change the sub ID of the upper breast code to zero E. And then you go to the lower breast, which is zero six, so right here. You change the sub ID to zero F and your character will spawn without a bra. However, I'm just going to know you cannot take a picture of that in the character editor. If you go into character editor and you're using, uh, I'll call them illegal clothing hacks or clothing mods like this, the game will revert those changes. You will only see this if you don't go into character editor. So if you go to training mode or you start playing your friends, it'll look just like you modded it. If you go into character editor, it won't. Character editor mods only show like tattoo changes, like uh, physique changes, stuff like that. It doesn't show anything else. Um, so you have to be a little careful for your equipment mods if it's like an illegal thing, like spawning female without a bra without anything covering the chest is usually like an illegal action as far as the game is concerned. Then it'll be like, oh, this isn't right, and it puts the bra there. It sees the confliction in the code uh, in the character editor, so just don't do that. Um, and that's basically all it is. Um, I don't have a database of these body, of, of every equipment part. It would take far too long to do that. Um, someone else is up to the task. Hey, all power to you. You're awesome. I don't think I have time to do that. So best thing to do is just to make it like a CAS character or something or copy all the parts that you want. Just, you know, like 09, this CAS has a special thigh. She has like armor on. So if I went to copy that armor on the Tira, I'd just copy that 09. And I'd go to the same area of Tira with that same position code and I'd just paste it there. Uh, it's the same exact thing because I guess he doesn't have a special waist on in this case. Um, if you notice here, you'll see a bunch of null values. This area is reserved for like outer equipment pieces, like chest plates, you know, armor stuff. That's you know, it's outer shell shit. Um, as you can see, it's structured the same way. I believe it would start with position ten here. If you like the CAS. Um, 10 would be like an outer shoulder, outer upper arms. You know, it basically goes in order. Um, yeah, so that's it. Really easy. Uh, last thing I'll show you before I go, because this is already going on too long, is pseudo character splicing. So I will open up a Natsu. I actually have, I believe, yeah, I have a two player Natsu saved. And I'll scroll to the same row, which would be. Um, right here. Zero four six zero, and if that same area with Tira, as you can see, a one-player model is structured differently. Basically, you know, it's all null values. The game is like mm, there's nothing fucking there. But there's only one, and this is all you need to know. This is all you need to do for character splicing. Is you know, this represents everything on Natsu. This is her two-player model. So you copy that, and I'll tell you what it is first. Um, 37 is actually, I could guarantee you that to be her voice bite. It's the same thing used to reference her model. So if I throw scrolls to the top, look, voice bite is 37. Her one-player model where there will therefore be 37. I believe it's like that for every character. Um, zero 01 represents a two-player model. So you have the main ID is 00, well, type 00, main ID, is 37, which is the voice byte for original characters. The one player, two player flag, this is not just two players, so it'd be zero, 01, zero, 00 would be your one player. Uh, sub ID, zero, 00, which is pretty much always going to be, and the position code is 1F. And if you will, you'll be like, well, you know, 1F, but how am I supposed to know where that's at here? Well, it's, you know, just look where it's at. It's to be exactly the same to its row. So row 0540. Starts at position 0B. So if I want to splice here with Natsu, 0540, 0B, let's make sure it's right place. It's right place, and afterwards just do a paste right. And basically, the thing is, when you do splicing, you don't you have very little control over what's copied. What's it always going to do? It's going to copy part of the face. So the face might look a little messed up, but not always. It's going to copy the hair, and it's usually going to copy most of their equipment. Um, it's random. You really have to see what it copies or what it doesn't. So, you know, it's a trial and error process. And when you do splicing, you cannot view it in the character editor. It will revert those changes. Um, 
just a heads up, maybe I'll do another part that will go more in depth with this because I've figured it out by now. I know how to do perfect splicing. I figured out how to give Tira Hilde's one player outfit, all that cool stuff, and it works just fine. Besides her visor is a little messed up. It's kind of out there, but besides a visor, it looks pretty good. And uh, I'll explain that to you in the next video, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's all splicing is. If you notice, there's it copies itself. Basically, you'll have this YY here, and you know the equipment starts over again and a row 0580, and you have the 0001. This is a broken equipment, so essentially, set it again. God damn it. Anyways, uh, yeah, just for broken equipment, you would just paste different stuff and different equipment reference values in here. So and that's all it really takes. It repeats itself several times. I have not tested everyone individually to see what it does. I just know that generally the stuff down here is the broken equipment pieces. So I would suggest you do further experimentation. Normally just putting it in the second piece here, the second section will work just fine. If you want to be safe, you could put all your broken equipment in all these parts and that should do you good. And really that's about it. After you get done modifying your character, just do a control A and copy all of the data. Go back to your Soul Calibur 5 save data, and I'll just find my Tira again. I have a Soul Calibur 3 splice Tira using stuff in this tutorial, and scroll up to the very top to the y.y, dot dot y, past all this stuff, and do a paste to write. And afterwards, save your file. I like to do a save as, I like to keep my original file unmodified, so I'll save it in my test folder. And there you have it. Very easy. Uh, just only knowing things. I don't have a database of all the equipment pieces. You'll have to create a CAS or create a one-player model to find out those those locations. Check the video description for maybe some helpful tips like this stuff. All the position codes. So you just create a character and you're like, I want to copy this from this character on a Tira or something. And you just look for the position code of that, you know, of that reference uh, model and you know, you'll know where to place it. I won't go over horizon saving. You guys should know that if you watch the other parts of the video. But um, anyways, questions, concerns, please post them. I would suggest you watch the video in the description again. A lot of people have been posting questions I blatantly answer, and that's kind of why I haven't been answering the questions. <laughs> you know, sorry to be an asshole, but I don't usually like asking, repeating the same thing I say in the video. But uh, yeah, just be sure to save it and stuff, and again, Opening your character in the character editor after you do these closed mods will revert the changes. So, uh, don't do that. But yes, this has been Dragon. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, character splicing is really easy, as you just saw. Um, part 6, maybe I'll go more in depth with it. But this should give you a basic understanding of how it works. So, you know, until next time, keep modding, stay strong. And hey, if you find out anything cool, let me know. Maybe we could put in the next video. You know, it's cool. It's supposed to be a community thing, right? So, uh, yeah, until next time.